Hello, I am Peter Blackwood and welcome back to Icon Diary. Here you find me by the plenty river that flows past my back gate. Well, actually I'm superimposed on it, you can see wattle and it's not wattle season, but hang, that's where I am. I have painted an icon of Friedrich Schleimacher for the calendar of other commemorations of the United Church in Australia. Schleimacher's life and work are commemorated on the 12th of February and to learn more about him I want to read a piece written by a colleague and friend of mine Bruce Barber. He writes, Schleimacher born 1768 died 1834 was unquestionably the most influential Protestant theologian of the 19th century so much so that he has been called the father of modern Protestant theology. Now, the word modern here is a technical term. It does not mean the latest, but rather is a synonym for, in this case, a new theological system made necessary by the widespread collapse of classical theology initiated by the human-centered strictures of the European Enlightenment which had reduced religion to the knowledge of God in terms of arguments for his existence, or more exactly, to natural theology and to morality. To this end, Schleimacher began his apologetic uh, endeavour by publishing a book he called On Religion, Speeches to Its Cultured Despisers published in 1799. Here he attempted to win back the educated classes to a serious encounter with religion which he defines as a sense and taste for the infinite, a foundation independent of all theological dogma. He contended that religion was based on intuition and feeling by which he meant not subjective emotion but an experience of absolute dependence the impact of the universe upon us in the depths of our being which transcends subject and object. In this respect, Schleimacher wanted to affirm that although Christianity is the highest of the religions, it is not the only true one. In 1809, he became Dean of the Theological Faculty in the newly founded University of Berlin. By this time, he was recognised as a stirring and convincing preacher. From 1819, he was chiefly occupied with the most important work, the Christian faith. The title is significant. It is not the doctrine of God, since what is positively given in the world is the Christian faith as such. That is to say, for Schleimacher, you do not first have to decide about the truths or the untruths of religion in general, or Christianity in particular. Rather, we find Christianity given as an empirical fact in history, and only then do we have to describe the meaning of its symbols. When he explains why he thinks Christianity is the highest manifestation of the essence of religion, Schleimacher says it is because Christianity has two defining characteristics. The first is what he calls ethical monotheism, namely a dependence on God as the giver of the law, which reveals the goal towards which we have to strive. The second is that everything is related to salvation by Jesus of Nazareth. Since this one possesses the fully developed religious consciousness, he does not need salvation. So he qualifies supremely as being the saviour. The import of Schleimacher's theology is that he subjects Christianity to a concept of religion which, at least in intent, is not derived from Christianity but from the whole panorama of world's religions. Two significant consequences follow from this foundation, both exemplifying what are essentially the presuppositions of modernity. First, his method is always to move from the general to the particular, and second, 
he insisted that knowledge and action are consequences of religious experience. They are not the essence of religion. It is readily apparent how successful Schleimacher has been since these principles continue to inform modern Protestant liberal Christianity, despite their being radically called into question by the prevailing theological concerns of most of the 20th century. Mm -hmm.